Alright guys, my name is uh, Steed, and I'm currently about to demonstrate my Banshee VGT software. I haven't really made any real videos about what it is. So once you click on the icon, this is the menu that's going to pop up. It's pretty simple. You have your comms port, your serial port selection. You have table 1, 2, 3, and 4. Your settings here is your boost pressure sensor your exhaust brake disengage RPM, your exhaust brake starting position, your VGT cold start aid, your check engine light, VGT cold start assist and check engine light disengage, the RPM to disengage, RPM pulse per revolution, RPM range, there's currently I think two ranges, I gotta double check, um, max RPM, engine RPM, these will change when you select the different ranges, it's basically just a resolution of the software pull up pull down resistor and active high low so I'm going to select COM13 click connect this is my current release it's 1033 so what you're seeing here is the current firmware version and the VGT status the VGT status is currently operating if I disconnect the turbo it's going to say not detected if it's calibrating it's going to say calibrating whatever the current status of the VGT is it's going to update here so this is the default settings when you get it out of the box, this is what's going to pull up before we make any saves. You want to have your sensor value. I currently supply a 60 PSI autometer sensor, but if you choose something else you can. So if you're using a gas engine, you know you might want a 15 or a 30 PSI instead of the 60, but if you want more power or more boost, essentially you can change it. And as you change the values, as you can see it's going to change the range down here. So currently 60 PSI is right here. And if I go to 100 PSI, it's going to change the whole table to 100 PSI table. Let's go back to 60. All right, so let's talk about what's actually going on here. So you got your settings. The VGT cold start and aid, which is the same as when you activate this and you set the RPMs. So what you want is whatever like you think your engine's going to catch. So when you're cranking on the motors, rotating, the engine finally gives and actually starts. Whatever that that threshold is, you know, maybe 300 or 400 RPMs before it actually kicks over. That's where you want it. And what's happening is the VGT is going to go to 100% exhaust brake, so it's going to get as tight as it can. And the whole purpose behind that is it's actually going to uh, increase your back pressure, which is going to increase the amount of heat that's inside your cylinders. But you don't want to actually have the engine sitting like that, so you have to have a catching point. And that's what this is. The check engine likes the same thing, so if you do like a diesel swap in like a Ford or a Chevy or really anything, and you have to have a computer to say, hey, something's wrong, this will allow you to illuminate the check engine light. So if the engine's off, it's going to illuminate that light until the engine catches and when it fires up, it's going to turn off the dummy light. Now let's go over here to your exhaust brake disengage. So what this is, this is really what makes this turbo, well, my Debanche controller act like it does on the 6.7. So when you tap in your engine RPMs and you're coming down to a stoplight, you're going to have that threshold just like on a 6.7, which is right around 1100 RPMs. You can set it to literally whatever higher than uh, your idle. So you know 1000, 1100, whatever you want to set it to. And what's going to happen is when you come down to that stoplight, you go below that threshold, it's going to disengage the exhaust brake and you're not going to bog your engine down or idle. Everyone thinks it's cool to have that exhaust brake whistling. There's even a couple guys on YouTube and a couple other guys that have these things in cars that they think they're spooling the turbo because they can hear that whistle. But really, it's just like you're blowing a whistle is what you're doing. You're just creating a uh, high velocity escaping through uh, the, um, the turbo, and it creates that whistling sound. You're actually not really spooling the turbo. You're, you're just creating a lot of load on the motor. Um, when you get to the exhaust brake starting point, so 85% might seem like a lot, but that's actually really low. For the average person, I would say about 95% is what you want. So when you're rotating the knob on my harness, you're literally going to go from 95 to 100%. And that, that really is where you're going to feel your distance. At 95%, which would be all the way to the left of my knob, you're going to feel your brake. But it's really you're going to feel more like you know, you're know you going up a hill and you take your foot off the gas. You're slowly going to slow down. The reason why I allow you to go down to 85% is for the guys that actually have um, Jake brakes because what you want is you want to close that turbo up but you don't want to actually choke it out like you would at 95% or 100% you want it to spool up because it's going to reinforce that Jake brake by spooling the turbo. Um, that would go down to engine RPM. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to connect your how many pulses are on your crank. 
So literally, you just type in, if you have a, a 5.9 or 6.7 optometer ohm, it's 59 pulses. Well, actually, 58 pulses, my bad. So you're going to say 58 pulses. For every one revolution of the engine, you're going to have 58 pulses. So now you have two ranges. Range 1 it says max RPM, 1,034. Obviously, that's way too low. So you go to range 2. Now the max RPM is 10,344. That's the one you want to use if you have a common room. Now if you have a 12 valve, you only have, I believe, two pulses. So range one, two pulses. You can spin all the way up to 30,000 RPMs with a two pulse um, dampener or, you know, a wheel, tone wheel. So you have a pull-up, pull-down resistor. All this does, if you're, if you have, basically, if you have a two-wire sensor that creates a sine wave, you do pull-up. So when it pull, when you basically, it pulses, my control will turn it into a positive signal so you can see it. Um, same thing, tool down. If you have a square wave, or sometimes you know you can do it with off and it still works just fine. And then active high or active low, which side of the signal do you want to see? You really get, you guys really don't have to um, mess around with this stuff too much. This is really, you, what really matters is you program this little bit here, you'll save it, and then if it doesn't work, you just try these settings. There's, there's no reason to, to understand the engineering's perspective. You just kind of click around until it works. It's perfectly fine. Now here's where I get a lot of people. So you have four tables. Now this is a linear table. So what I mean by that is you have your starting position. Your starting position is right where this first green dot is, right around where it says 20%. So this is where when you come down to an idle, this is where the turbo is going to go. So you have zero boost. This is where you're at. So if you click diagnostics, I'm commanded to 20%. My actual is 20%, which is right where I'm telling it to be. Now, like I said, this is the default tune. From here, you guys have to play around with it a little bit. So the ending position, as you see here, it literally goes start at 20, end at uh, 60. PSI actually should be 30. I don't know why it says that. i got to fix that. And basically what's happening is you start at 20% here. I'm going to travel to 60%, which goes all the way up to here. And it's going to take me 30 pounds of boost, which is what you see here. Now, these four tables allow you to tear that out. So it's always going to be linear from one table to the other. So it's a straight line, but you can tear it out four times. So if I stay here and go down to 15%, it'll drop down. And if I want to go, let's say... 25, well that's weird, 25, that's totally being weird, and that's weird, I gotta figure that out, so now I'm gonna go to 25, and then you sit there and say, okay, well I wanna do that, and 10 PSI. So what you're telling my controller, well the Banshee controller, is on table one, I want to start at 15%, which you see here, I'm going to end at 25%, which is here, as you can see, 15, 20, and I'm going to do it at 10 PSI. So where you see 10 PSI will be 25%. Now table two, it's going to say I'm going to 32 PSI, and I'm going to go all the way up to 98%. So, you know, you can fix that, bring that down. So you can sit there and say maybe 40 at well, 18, whatever. So as you can see, it kind of changes right around here, and you can see it goes a little bit further up. And you can do the same thing. So really, there's no right or wrong answer. The wrong, well, I'll take it back. The wrong answer is you have a really flat line going across you're not actually moving the turbo up so as you accelerate and as you build pressure you're going to have a lot of the load in your exhaust system so you, you got you got to get it out of the turbo so if you have if you're starting here low and i had a couple guys send me pictures in their data logs they literally would be at 20 percent and flat lining all the way across by doing that you're not moving the turbo so you have to move the turbo as the turbo gets bigger it exponentially gets bigger so there really isn't a one size fits all like it really comes down to how much fuel you're pushing your exhaust system um, if your head's ported your cam I mean there's a lot of variables so you really, you really can't have just one tune be happy with everyone 
So I'm just making some BS settings real quick. So. All right, so what's going on here? So I start at 15%, as you can see here. I'm going to end at 25%, which you know is like right here, and it's going to take me 10 PSI. So if I start here, you go to 10 PSI, that's 25%. And then I'm going to go to 40% at 18. So I'm right about here, you know, 40% travel, 18 pounds. And then I'm going to go to 56, which is this next angle, at 25. And then I'm going to go to 66 at 35, as you see there. So this would be 35. Once you hit 35 pounds, that's it. That's a table. So if I save that to my computer, bolt to the controller. Are you sure you want to save configuration? Okay. So now it's saving. If I go to diagnostics, right now I have a pot connected to the controller. The pot's kind of messed up, but whatever. Uh, so I can't demo 10 because I'm already past that, but I see here 18. I'll actually dead back. So starting at 15, we're going to go to 10s. So you got 15% plus or minus 1 in the axis position is normal. Boost pressure is zero, 0. So if I go to 10 PSI, I should be at 25%. Yeah. Right there. So I mean, it's close enough. So now I'm at 10 PSI. If I go to 18, I should be at 40. Oops. And then 25, 56. And then 3566. And that's it. After that, a flat line. So if I go all the way up to 60 psi, which you see here, the position shouldn't move. There you go. If I go back, same thing. All right. So go over the diagnostic page real quick. You have your command position, actual position. Now, plus or minus one on here, like I said, is normal. This is the load. The load is how much current the actuator is using. So out of the available current, it would actually suck up. It's currently using 50% load just to hold its position, which is perfectly fine. The BGT temp, you got Fahrenheit and Celsius. You got engine RPM, turbo RPM, and then you have whole set diagnostic, Jetica Masuba diagnostics. You'd find these on Aquino like trucks. Then you got data logging. So in the whole set of ones, if you basically take the actuator off, you want to click install, go through that whole procedure, it's going to give you a bunch of little diagnostics. Same thing with calibrate. Calibrate is basically the dumbed down version. It's basically like, hey, maybe these are off. You just want to do it real quick. If that doesn't fix it, you'll have to pull the actuator off. And to do that, you'll have to drain your coolant. Big pain in the butt. Data log is pretty easy. All you got to do is click start. That's it. So as you see, zero PSI, go back and forth. Once you're done, you're going to click save, open, and then you're going to open it up. And it prints it off into an Excel spreadsheet. As you can see, I started at 15%. I was basically just moving the pot back and forth. So 60 PSI boost, max position 66 and then went back down. Pretty easy. I'll go back into that real quick. Get some more data. So if you're thinking you have an issue with your turbos, a lot of guys, the big problem is people buy these turbos off Craigslist, they buy off, off eBay, um, or maybe an online form, and the guy always says, oh, I want to do second gen swap, I want to do this. But the odds are the turbo is probably failing, the actuator is failing, and he just didn't want to deal with the problems. So if you're basically driving down a road, you're building boosts, and you feel like the turbo lets go, you do a data log, it's going to give you the status of the turbo right here. So you'll know exactly what's going on. So basically if it says operating, it'll say not detected. 
boot fail, error, there's a couple different errors I'll give you. You'll be, you'll be able to diagnose all that information. That's pretty much it. Um, I can control, well the Banshee controller control virtually any turbo. Currently I have it set up for any whole set essentially. The Jetica Masubu actuators you found on Hino's, they're basically GT um, 35 and 40 series that you find on Duramax or Power Strokes. The difference is instead of being hydraulic, they're uh, electronically controlled, so they're real easy to use. And then of course the International 6 Ford Ford 6 Ford. So if you ever want to put the compounds in something, all you got to do is just click here and you're good to go. Um, and then if anyone ever wants any more, you know, just add another clicky for them. So let's go to config 2. As you saw on diagnostics, it's currently set to, uh, what did I say, 35 PSI. That's the maximum amount of boost that my controller is going to recognize to get to 66. So as you see, I'm at 60 PSI, in other words, 100% of my sensor that, you know, demonstrates right here. And I'm at 66. Pretty simple. So new feature that I've been uh, slowly improving is the digital wastegate. So it literally is just that. So like I said, these turbos, once you get to a certain point, they exponentially get bigger because there's four ranges of operation. A lot of people think, oh, it's a VGT turbo. It'll spool really good. But that's the difference between a VNT, VVT, and the whole set of VGT is the VNT and VVT turbos, they really suck at exhaust brakes because when you, when you restrict the housing as tight as it can get, the exhaust gas can only go in one direction. That's through the turbine. If you take apart a whole set, it has a sliding wall. They call it sliding wall technology, and it protrudes over the turbine, and that wall is what builds your back pressure. And when that happens, it actually stalls the turbo because it deflects the gas around the turbine so you don't overspool the turbo. So if you actually use an aftermarket kit for a power stroke or a Duramax to get that exhaust brake, it will work. It will slow you down. But measure the, in the turbo RPMs. How fast is that turbo spooling? Because you can overspool it, and you can blow the bearings. The whole set of VGTs are the best for exhaust brakes. Um, but just like that, I can potentially overspool a turbo with my kits. So I've been working on a digital wastegate. So the digital wastegate, what it does is it does a predictive analysis of where, how much boost you have and where the turbo should be or where it was. And by doing this, like I said, I make so much pressure here, it's going to go to a default position here. Once it's well, not default, but you know, the table position. Once it's at the table position, Without the digital wastegate, you can continuously spool this turbo, but that position is not going to change. The controller is going to hold its position. You'll be able to watch the load on the data logging. The load will increase, but that position should hopefully stay relatively the same. But your boost pressure will again increase. Just like right now, I have 60 PSI boost from my pot, but I'm holding that position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the wastegate. I have to update the setting because I need to make the minimum value a couple PSI higher than my travel rate. Right, I thought I did it, but I didn't do it. So right now I have 35 PSI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 40. And I'm going to save my settings. So max, my max boost to get to 66 is going to be 35 PSI. I'm currently at zero. And right now, because I was at 66, like I said, it does that predictive analysis to get back. So right now I'm at 15%, which is what my table one demonstrates. And I'm at zero PSI. So I'm gonna slowly ramp it up. Now right now, it's just not doing any predictive analysis because it's currently still on my tables. Oops, go back a little bit. trying to get to 35. Alright, so I'm at 35, 66, 65, like I said, plus or minus one in the actual is perfectly fine. So I'm at 35 pounds, which is my travel rate. 40 PSI is my threshold for my wastegate. So I'm going to slowly move up. As you see, nothing's changing except for boost pressure. Now I'm going to go to 41. And you wait. So it's doing a predictive analysis. So right now, it wasn't seeing any big changes, but it noticed once it started moving, my boost pressure was not going down. So it ramped up. So it started slow, 
and then it increased the value of the VGT position. So it actually opened up 100% right now, trying to get to that. Now I'm going to move it back down, see if I can get it down just a little bit. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to wait because it thinks it's fine, but then it's going to slowly start ramping back down, or at least it should. And maybe it can go a little bit more. There it goes. But see, it won't go below that threshold. Sit like I said, 64 is probably fine. Ah, right, now I'm going back up. Now, if you have a drastic change, so I'm at 35, it's going to immediately change. It's, that's the whole part of the predictive analysis. It, it, it's trying to see where it's at. So if you're holding a position where the boost pressure is being regulated, you don't want that vein to snap back because then it's going to give you like a simulated surge, which really isn't a surge, it's just that vein ramping back and forth. So the predictive analysis allows it to kind of see where it's at and if it's okay, well, if my threshold's 40 but I'm at 38 or 37 and it's holding, then it really shouldn't change. Now if I snap back, it's going to be a little bit faster. but it's only going to snap back to where this boost pressure aligns with that position. So if it happens to be zero, it's going to lower itself back down to zero. But this is still, as you can see, you know, it's an experimental feature. Um, it's constantly being refined and it's going to get better. I'm constantly making improvements. Right now, this is my focus. The next focus is going to be uh, basically a threshold for engine RPM to make sure, depending on the engine RPM, the VGT won't close up below that unless you're exhaust braking. Um, and then I'll add the same thing to the turbo RPM, so you'll be able to type in a threshold for the turbo RPM, so we'll attempt to regulate based on the turbo RPM. And then eventually I tie in the throttle position sensor. The throttle position sensor will have a couple different features. Um, a lot of people actually been asking me what they want is if you're idling and you're off throttle, they want the VGT to go wide open. Um, that'll give the vehicle a nice low throaty tone, like you basically have no turbo, straight pipes, which is kind of neat. And then the second you touch the gas, it snaps back into its starting position. Um, but this also has benefits if you're basically towing up a hill, you get to the top of the hill and you're coasting down the other side where you don't want the brake, it'll do the exact same thing. It'll open wide open and it'll help cool down the cylinders. Um, so it's definitely pretty cool, constantly updating stuff. I mean, you can easily go on the forums, ask people who have my product. It's never the same. Every few months, I'm constantly updating it. The harnesses are constantly being modified for new turbos, new features. The software is constantly going. The firmware is constantly being updated. There is absolutely no one that can compare to what my product is. Um, the controllers themselves, a lot of people wonder if they have to put them in the engine bay. Well, inside the cab, like behind the dash, under the seat. Where can they actually put them? The controllers are IP67, so what that means, you can literally throw it in a bucket of water and go to the controller. The controller is completely sealed. Um, it's water submersible down to a couple of meters. If uh, you're not really big in electronics and you're setting it up, the controller is reverse polarity protected. So if you don't realize red means positive and you go to negative, it's not going to hurt the controller. Um, if you're over in Europe and you want to use this on a European vehicle, the controllers are 12 and 24 volts nominal. They're surge protected up to 60 volts. Uh, so there, there really is, it's a highly engineered piece of technology. I'm constantly, like I said, constantly updating it. I'm eventually going to be controlling transmissions with it. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry for being a little bit long. Um, but hopefully this guys this gives you guys a better understanding of how to use the software. Thanks.